My name is Jim Weisel, Professor of Accountancy at Georgia Gwinnett College. In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of refinements to pivot tables. When you're working with large sets of data, you may have noticed that uh, if there is either missing data for a particular uh, data range or if there are zeros, that that may or may not display the way that you want it to display in a pivot table. So what we're going to do here is show you a couple of things uh, to do to modify the structure of the pivot table to make sure that you're able to communicate the information uh, correctly for the users. So what I have here is the data set from the National Paper Company. That's one of the files that was available for download. And I'm going to very quickly structure a basic pivot table just to show you a couple of things here that are somewhat uh, sort of anomalies to a pivot table. So I've got my data set. It's already uh, designed as a table. And I'm going to insert a pivot table here. And I'm not going to do much with formatting and that sort of thing. Uh, but I am going to just get a two-dimensional pivot table. All right, and so we can see here in the pivot table uh, that I've got uh, revenue by product line by state. We can also see that there are some blank cells here. Uh, and now that's okay by itself, uh, but if we are depending on the question that's being asked, uh, we may notice some things that kind of go awry, particularly when you start applying filters. So let's just take Alabama here as an example. Uh, Alabama had $17,000 in revenue from copy paper line, uh, just over $24,000. Toilet paper, writing paper was $38,000. And uh, I obviously have not formatted these things to dollars just yet, but notice here that napkins and paper towels are both blank. Okay, so that's all right. If I were to apply a filter here and just squeeze this down just to Alabama, so let's say. Notice what happens is that the two product lines that did not have any data disappear completely. Uh, and so that may cause problems in terms of getting charts put together uh, and in terms of interpreting the information. Like for now, for example, uh, I can't remember which two paper or which two product lines are not showing up here. Right, so that's not necessarily what we want, uh, particularly when we're looking at financial kinds of data. We want to know what's there, and zero is a legitimate possible uh, <clears throat> uh, amount. And so what you want to do to make sure that your pivot table will display that correctly uh, you need to do three things. You need to make three modifications to the pivot table. So the first thing is to make sure that your row headers and your column headers uh, are modified correctly. So the way, you know, we talked about in class how to apply uh, field settings to the values here. Uh, if you click in any one of these cells, even if it's blank, if you click in any one of these cells, and either right click and go to uh, value field settings uh, or you can go to the pivot table field list and collect your or click on your sum of revenue in this case and go to value field settings you can modify the field settings here uh, and so that's fine we can do that uh, in fact we'll come back to that uh, in just a second uh, but there, we could, there are also field settings for uh, the row headers and column headers as well. Now, it's not modifying the data, but it is modifying how these things function here. And so the field settings for the column and row headers work basically the same way. So I'm going to click on just pick any one of my column headers here, and I'm going to right click and I can go to field settings and we get this little dialog box 
uh, that uh, is asking us how we want to present some things. Uh, but right now, what I want to focus in on is the layout and print. And here's the key. Show items with no data. That means that I want to show all of the column headers, even if there is no data relevant to that particular column. So I'm going to check mark the show items with no data. And this will be applied for all the product lines. So I click OK. I also want to click somewhere in my row headers. And I want to do the same thing here. So I'm going to uh, right click or select any one of my row headers. It uh, doesn't matter which one, just any one of the row headers. Right click, go to field settings. Again, this little dialog box comes up. And you notice that my name here, my row header is by state. I'm going to do the same thing. Layout and print, show items with no data. Click OK. And alter the underlying structure of the values here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm on the Analyze ribbon. And I'm going to go to the Pivot Table Options. We talked about this as, as well the other day. So I'm Analyze Ribbon, Pivot Table, Options. And for empty cells, I'm going to show a zero. Make sure that this is checkmarked and put a zero in for all the empty cells. Click OK. And you notice now all the blank cells now have zeros in them. And also, because I restructured the row headers and the column headers to show even blank data, I can go now and start applying filters. And notice now, instead of napkins and paper towels disappearing, they're actually shown as zeros in the pivot table. And that's what I want to do. I can do all the other things I would normally do if I want to get rid of the total uh, column and the total row and all that kind of stuff and format to revenue. But again, what I'm focusing on here is making sure that all of the relevant rows and columns show in my pivot table, even with filters applied, and even if there is no value for a particular product line or in this particular case a particular state. So that's the solution to uh, making sure that even blank cells are properly shown in a pivot table. You need to modify your column headers to show uh, cells with no data, modify your row labels to show with no data, and then if you want and this is what I would recommend, modify the options of the pivot table to show zeros in the value fields.